Yeah, you know, we're, we're just out here getting her done. Are you ready? Should I do yeah, what I'm we have to do on camera? Is that a good angle? Yeah. Here, let me do a little <laughs> Hey Jordan. Yeah. Why do we always pick the coldest day of the week to work outside? I don't know. We're just tougher than the rest, I suppose. He is. He's from Iowa, down in the banana belt. Yeah, we are uh, attempting to fix some tile outlets out in that field, down by the ditch. The ditch was dug out. Tile outlets were kind of, I think, silted over and dirty and didn't really know where they were. They weren't marked well. Had this issue on a lot of stuff. So you gotta dig the ditch out and you kinda find the outlets and then you fix them when you're done. Would assume the metal is kinda rusted and shot on the outlet pipe, so as usual, we're coming in with plastic. We got a couple of that and we're doing a bunch of fixing, so let's get unloaded. You're not on our property. <laughs> I don't think it would have mattered, but it is springtime. Oh. The compaction shows up a little easier, so we'll keep it in our field. Not much of a fence line. Are we working today or just gonna drive around? We're just gonna drive around. That's why we get paid the big bucks. That wasn't very good, was it? <laughs> oh, he just drives that thing wherever he wants. Unbelievable. Look at this, though. This is nice. <clears throat> so obviously, here's the ditch that was cleaned out. And cleaned out real well, too. I know my bottom's loose. There we go. So, we've got an outlet there that we might just be able to cut. This one looks fine. I'm just gonna put some new T-posts there. And there's, there's some trouble somewhere down there. <clears throat> this doesn't look as bad as I thought. No, I think the Sawzall will manage that one. It should just peeled up a little bit. This one looks fine. There's a lot of water coming through. Yeah. I don't want to get my boots muddy. <laughs> no, I didn't really think it would be this wet. Yeah. And I've got holes in my boots. That looks like I'm the candidate for the job. Well, so we pack up, head back, get some boots. I think it's dinner time anyway. Yep. Yeah. All right, we'll try this again tomorrow. You know, we're, we're just out here getting her done. Woo! She's got her. All right, so as we were talking, <clears throat> we gotta come back, put a road and garden here, but yep. now you won't cut yourself. You need a chair or you nope, good? I'm good. Okay. You look kind of comfy. I just got hired to be cameraman. That was, that was the only reason I'm here. Here. Mm -hmm. you, your hand's dirty, you need a rag? Yeah. Let me take them from you. So, why are we doing two posts? Put them at the end of your pipe. My bad. <laughs> Put them at the end of your pipe. That way when you're digging the ditch out, you know where you're safe with the bucket. 
put one on each side of the pipe so when you're digging it out you can't dig in between the fence posts you don't rip out your uh, your pipe is that, is that a new pliers yeah they're not very good they don't come out of the holster very well is that a new holster yeah I'm no wider but I can get them out in a pinch. I think that's an old western reference. Okay, let's push these down. All right, simple fix here. Put the new pipe on, dug her back a little bit. That's the old pipe that got ripped off and digging out the ditch, so. And it looks beyond shot to begin with, so. Back to plastic, which doesn't rust as fast. And we're gonna push some dirt on this and we're done. This project was a lot easier than I had anticipated. So, put the flags, I don't know, right or wrong, tile flags are up a little bit from the outlet, just so you can see them, because eventually this will all grow back in grass, so if your flag's in the bottom, it snow and grass kind of covers it up and try to get them visible from the, the field height. So, simple fix, tiling. You ready? Yeah, let's go! Let's do Woo! It. All right, Eric and Jordan just got back and me and Brody have been working in the shop all day on a field cultivator, doing wheel bearings and greasing and looking it over. I would rather be outside though. Well, we kind of are outside. The door's outside. open, it's still beautiful. But we're on to a new project. So uh, we are gonna be pulling this Halo VRT with the 580 this year. Uh, it was being pulled by a 600 last fall. So we pulled the joystick out of it last fall actually. But we have to put it in there because this implement is controlled by the joystick. So we have to route the wires under the fuel tank back to here somewhere to plug in. We have a hydraulic hose that needs some, it's got a pinhole in it, always has. So I don't know if we build a new one here, looks reasonable enough, or else we gotta put a splice in. So we'll see what we do there. Otherwise just grease it, pump tires, make sure this is ready. I intend on using this a fair amount this spring on the corn on corn acres, I'm hoping being our field cultivators do not have baskets on, I'm hoping that we maybe, maybe, it'll have to be a call once we get in the field to see, but you can put down pressure on those baskets. So what I'm hoping is that we won't have to land roll our corn on corn acres before we go and plant it. The reason we do that is just to make the corn planter ride smoother, get a little better seed to soil contact, but I'm hoping with the baskets, we don't have to worry about that. But we'll find out this spring. And we uh, chose the 580 for this because the uh, field cultivators, they have AccuDepth on them. So those two 600s are wired up special, uh, special box and screen in there. So this one does not have that. That's why it's deemed to this job, which is fine. It's been tuned up to 670. So it's got as much power as a 600. And I don't intend this pulling all that hard. We're fish taping. One way. What? Nothing. You gonna get it first try? Not a chance. Look at that. <laughs> wow, in six inches. Okay, I'm gonna have to crawl under there, I think. It's looped. It looped down underneath the uh, axle. Hold up, Brody. Good night. Uh, pull back. Push forward. Hold up. I gotta get out. Yeah, I think that'll work. Actually, from here, I don't think we have to go through anything else, so. Uh, tape her up and send her through. Okay, Brody, we're ready to send her. It's a big end, so be gentle.
Is it hooking? You're gonna have to go underneath in there. Oh, good. Be honest with you guys, that was an embarrassing amount of time that we just spent trying to get that through there. Why would you even tell them that? Oh, never mind. It went right through there like uh, it was lubed up with butter on it. Wow. Yeah. Woo! You, what there should be, actually, is a cutout here so that you can just reach right in there. Well, that's what I thought that hole was for, but. Yeah, Brody was dismantling the rear. I thought I'm sure you could get your hand in there, but then it worked. Not even your oh, little hand. Oh, my. Well, that's good for it. That's yeah. what the cover is supposed to prevent. The cover made it worse. <laughs> I think we're missing an oil ring. Maybe. Gave up on that job for right now. I don't know why we just went to this job. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, because I was looking at it and then we just jumped to this job. But you see that just teeny, 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 tiny poke there? It's just a small pinhole in this hose. So, Brody wants to replace the whole hose. I say we just cut out this little bit here and put a splice, which would be too not really a splice, it's two ends that connect to each other. Creating a splice would be a lot cheaper. I vote on that, then we don't have to make a big, well, it's, it's pretty simple all around, but we can bring the hose maker right here and just do it on the machine, Brody. Mm -hmm. I'll go look for some fittings. Okay, go over here. <laughs> all right, I think I'm gonna do something like this. So it's just a flared fitting. And then there's my, I'm just gonna cut the hose, cut a little bit out of each side of that in case there's damage. Put that in there. And that should fix our problem, hopefully. Leaking! There's pressure in it. That's nice. Really, really sweet. Nice. It made me look like I wet myself. I promise you I didn't. I outgrew that last year, that problem. Should have maybe took the hydraulic coupler off so that didn't happen. But we should be good to proceed now after making a large mess everywhere, including ruining my nice new shirt. So I'll have to get those at uh, the link in the description, farmfocus.com, because it, it's literally brand new. I gotta get another one. You guys should get one too. See what I just did there? Shameless plug. Leakage! Leakage! Pause for a moment. I've gotta clean up this general area a little bit. So, I'd like to use my nice crimper here, but unfortunately the pump blew up twice. We rebuilt this once and used it twice and then it blew up again. So now it's parts are ordered for a new motor for that, which I'm not even gonna say how much that costs. It's what you get when you buy used stuff on the internet. So we're back to the hand pump. There's nothing wrong with it, it works just fine. It's just a lot more time consuming. I really like this one for in-field breakdowns, I can take it right out there and quick trip a hose, make a hose, couple of hose, do whatever. Let's just say you wouldn't want to make 10, 20 of these things or you'd be one jack dude. Okay, that's it. Nothing to it. That looks pretty nice, actually. See, like this is this is why I like this thing because they don't have to take the hose off of the machine. Just crimping her down slowly but surely. I think it's airlocked now. It oh, I don't pumping. like laying on its side. It wasn't pumping. How was the restroom? We didn't even talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> To say Mexican didn't agree with me. You gotta quit with the Mexican food, dude. 
<laughs> Not meant for me, I don't think. But it's so good. <laughs> Good as new. Just a little bit more oil soaked than before. All right, that looks pretty nice. Nice and neat. We gotta get our box and our cab before we can unfold and really do any service work to the machine. So that's what we're working on now. What are you doing? You gotta remove the whole corner here? If you're gonna do it neat. Huh? Of course. We gotta brodyify it. I don't really have a problem with that, but odds are it will be taken out again. Odds are. Keep that in mind. All right, Brody, are we ready to unfold? Uh, we've got our wires routed up into the floor here to this box that controls it. I got it wrapped up real nice around the back of the seat. I added this bracket here so this joystick stays permanent so we can just adjust here by our controls. That actually is pretty nice. It gets kind of close to stuff. I don't like that so much, but I think we're ready. Do you remember how to run this? Because I don't. No, I don't. One is raise. It says extend SCD Two and one. three, I believe, are the ones that light up the joystick. Is there any stops in this? Yes. No. Yes? I don't know. Yes, but I see them on the frame yet, so no. <laughs> All right, firing. It's dead! I have a battery charger on it. What's going on? Oh, you unplugged my battery charger. You want to know why it didn't start? Huh? It probably helps you have a kill switch. Well, it's no. trying to start. What have you done? What's the kill switch do, Brody? Because my screen's been lit up for... A half an hour. That explains why the batteries were dead. The kill switch is just there for looks. Brody, it's still dead. <laughs> All we get is a big long sigh. Jumper pack to the rescue. The hours that that little guy saves us in a year. Don't know how we lived without one. You gonna put the battery charger back on this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. How something like that can start a tractor? Beyond me, I really don't care how it works. It just works really good. Okay, we gotta wait for some stuff to. Well, so far our uh, hose crimp hasn't blown off, so that's a good sign. We'll raise that up, and then we're gonna see if we can remember how to operate this. Two and three, is it pull back or push ahead? Push ahead. Push ahead. Tilt. Okay, Mr. Screen's finally booted up so we can see all right, Brody, I think number two is back is backwards because I pulled back on number two and now we now it's working. There we go, Brody. All right, we finally found figured out what was going on. We had the hydraulic remotes backwards, so nothing was making sense, making it all just much more confusing. Uh, but once we figured out the hydraulics were backwards. Works great. Raise number one. All right, check tires. We can grease wheel bearings. None of these are greasable, so we don't have to worry about that. I did see some string or twine or something wrapped around a couple of them. We probably should get that out of there. I don't think there's anything greasable here. 
but the hinge points need greasing. Uh, the blades, that's the, the selling point of this machine out of all the high speed discs is the Halo VRT. These can be pitched angled differently. So you can go from two degrees, which is virtually straight to 15 degrees. Um, make it more aggressive, less aggressive, which I think will be very nice this spring. We can fine tune how aggressive we wanna be. I need to set up the screen a little bit. I believe Jordan is going to probably be the guy operating this most of the time, or that's what I think now. Unless Brody, you're gonna do sun tillage and plant everything too. I could, I could probably do it. <laughs> well, anyone can do it. It's just a matter of the time. Uh-huh. Well, there ain't much to grease on this. No, this one will be quick. This one will be quick. The main work was running the harness to the cab, but once that's done, she'll be ready, sitting in the line, hooked up, ready, waiting for the date. Waiting for the date. We've got our grease zerks we can do. We have to fold it up to hit a couple of grease zerks on some hinge points, so as soon as she boots up here, we'll fold it up. And then me and Brody decided that it's maybe too early to keep it hooked up and let the tractor sit outside, so we'll probably uh, end up unhooking this thing. This is kind of nice being mounted there, even though it's kind of jankily set up with some zip ties, but it'll do. There's no like mounting bracket on it, so zip ties it was. Lower it down. I think while it was folding, Brody greased them, so I think we're ready to go on hook. So where do you want to park this? Right where it was? Or do you want to try to organize this better? Everything here in our line has just gotten so unorganized. That's a good spot, but it's not, not a good spot actually. It's gonna have to go right there. <laughs> right back where it was. All right. You don't want to go park over there? Well, but we could show them what we almost destroyed this morning. You want to tell them what you did earlier today? It was you too. <laughs> wow. You were driving, so it's your fault. I guess so. <laughs> Just about got stuck. <laughs> wow. So we were trying to, we backed the digger in here, as you can see, and serviced that one up yesterday. Thought to ourselves, well, this is a nice spot here, you know, on the backside until that building that we removed, hog barn we removed here, is uh, still not maybe packed or settled decent, and the digger went whoop, and we very quickly stopped, and then when we pulled ahead, it wanted to keep sinking. It wasn't good. Very, there was a lot of, I was screaming. I may have been screaming. I had 600 horse, so I was fine. <laughs> we'll see it in a month, I suppose. Where'd you get all the oil from? The hoses. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that would be. I don't know. So is there a point in turning the kill switch off since the battery dies anyways? I never got time to charge anyways. It's been oh, a problem since you, we got you took it. the battery charger off. It's been a problem since we've got it. What has been? The battery. It's because the kill switch don't work properly. I need chapstick. <laughs> wow, that was random. Well, every single quad that you have is dead. After it sits all the way through. That's true. There's power drudge from somewhere. All right, we've decided that we're done washing and needing the uh, fire hose station set up in here. So we're gonna take this over to Fred's for the summer because I don't foresee us needing this in here and it takes up a lot of room. And we're gonna clean this up and get this on the trailer and haul it over there hopefully. Visibility is what you might call poor. Can't really see what I'm doing or where I'm going. It's maybe best that I have my back. I must back before wrecking something. Hopefully this fall is a nice dry fall and we don't get everything all full of mud and uh, 
Maybe we won't need this next year, hopefully. Or we could put a well in that pumps like 30 gallons a minute, which would be ideal, but we'll see what happens, I guess. Easy does it. We better tilt her down before it flips on us. Cause that looks kind of scary. You want to load up too? Did you find your flashlight? I did. You did? Where was it? Gravel. I left his flashlight. Remember yeah, when I lucky. said my flashlight died? Got and lucky. And then I used his and then I set it somewhere and she fell off. Well, it took some shimmying, but we did manage to get it in here. We had it over there last year, but now there's mowers there, so that ain't gonna work. But it's fine here. It's quite a quite a setup we got going here. <laughs> I don't know why we care about these doors when there's no door there, but. You gotta care about them. We, uh, this shed, fun fact, got totaled out in the storm also. It, it's still here, but the, depreciated it down to whatever value and the damage, it kind of twisted it. It's not square anymore. The door's missing and insurance totaled it out. So, here's what it is. All right, guys, I think that's gonna be a wrap on the day. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope to see you in the next video and uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.